Hello everyone, Nick again here with Scott and Nikki. We appreciate you stopping by for another of our weekly tech videos we do every Friday. This week's video is covering lifters. We actually get quite a bit of questions about these. Some common misconceptions about the tried and true LS7 lifter that's been around for so many years now, as well as some of the aftermarket lifters. Some people think a lifter is a lifter. The only thing they're paying more for is quality or is it valve train stability? And like, what, do you, what are you buying? What are you buying it for? And what's the point of, man, some of these are cheap. 200 bucks, 300 bucks, 400 bucks, 500 bucks, or even higher. Now we carry a lot of lifter brands around, of course, like the most popular is the L7 lifter. I've used them in pretty much everything, but for some of you big guys, the Johnson lifters, Crower, even Comp Cams offer some specialty lifters. There's a lot of brands out there that are two or three times the money, and you're wondering what for and why. Well, to talk about this, most of the time, the LS7 lifter is gonna be the best street lifter. These things are very tough, very well machined, they have good valving in them. And that is something I wanted to touch on was the valving inside of these. Some people don't understand that when you start running higher spring pressures for bigger camshafts, that starts to infect the inside of this. These are hydraulic, they have a little tiny pump in them. That can affect things. And that's what we have here. I took apart a stock LS7 lifter. This actually came out of the V6 engine that we were working on in our DOD video a few weeks ago. And you did hear that right, LS7 lifter, in that V6 engine. One of the biggest mis misconceptions with the LS7 lifter is it only came in LS7 lifters and none of the other LS or LT engines, their normal roller lifters are something you know subpar. That's not the case. These were nicknamed the LS7 lifter because that's what these lifters had debuted in. And that was the, that was the big dog at the time. 7 liter engine, over 500 horse, 7,000 RPM. It was a track monster. So kind of like I've said in some of the previous videos, us hot rodders, we like to nickname things, give it a little bit of slang. Well, we all nickname these the LS7 lifter and the market, including us, has just taken off with that name. But they were put in everything. By the time 07, 08 came around, the LS7 lifter became the standard service lifter in everything from a 4853 6 liter truck, 6.2 trucks, LS3s, they even put them in some of the later LS2s and everything, and it's been the standard since, and they are still using these in the LT engines on their non-DOD lifters like we have here. So yes, even the V6 engine, it got it. So I took one of these apart. This is a used one, of course, and it shows the different valving and, of course, the spring right here. And there are different size orifices. There are different springs that they use to help oil control. So when you're turning you know, a hydraulic lifter that high of an RPM, remember back in the flat tappet days, everybody thought 6,000 RPM or so was about, about it for a hydraulic. You had to go solid. Well, the technology has definitely picked up since then, and as well as machining and tolerances have gone way up. So LS7 lifter, that's why it's recommended so much. It's a great lifter from the factory for cheap it's made well it's not that it isn't a tough lifter it's once you start putting on dual valve springs 600 7000 plus rpm a little bit of track use they can pump up they can cause issues they can well cause valve train instability so that is why you will hear us start recommending that once you start getting past a certain point depending on what your build is used for we start recommending some of these other lifters these other brands johnson of course is definitely one of the more popular ones that we sell they sell a great high quality lifter for a good price and they definitely modify the insides of them they blueprint them to make sure all of this is met to the exact same tolerances between all 16 lifters it takes extra man hours to make sure that's perfect but that's what you need when you're running something maybe a little high strung here like this and of course some of you probably wonder well I don't get it like the LS has lifter trays and so do the LTs why do they still make link bar style lifters for an LS or an LT engine well those lifter trays when abused with enough RPM track use they kind of can become unstable as well. You can end up running into problems with those. They are a high, high quality uh, you know, composite plastic, but they can't handle anything and everything. So you gotta add just that extra edge to make sure these things keep from turning. And so that's why they also sell ones like this. Another thing that people ask about is reduced travel or short travel lifters. Now that's because in these lifters, when you start getting in high RPMs, you are losing a very small amount of lift as that plunger compresses 
as it's revving up. Again, that's why some lifters have different valving and springs to kind of help maintain that as best as possible. Other times, there's nothing really you can do about it, and so they do a short or reduced travel style lifter. And essentially, as simply as it goes, say the preload inside of one of these lifters when you're setting up your push rod length. Remember that from our last video? It was anywhere between 30 to 60 thousandths. We in the aftermarket had found out it was anywhere from 50 to 100 thousandths. That's a lot. Well, these short travel ones, they're a lot shorter than that. They can be 20 thousandths window. That's real tiny to the point that we don't recommend factory style rockers, even if you have an upgraded trunnion. You need one that has an adjustable uh, base in the back for the push rod because of how tight tolerance is, but it allows them to still do a little bit of that hydraulic action, but it does not allow them to compress when you're really trying to maximize your valve train stability as well as your horsepower. Now, I know I covered a lot of topics here, and it's sometimes it's hard for y'all to make a decision based on what I'm telling you here. This was an educational video. If you have a build going on and you're wanting to know, hey, can I use an LS7 lifter? No, do I need to use a Johnson lifter? Do I need to step up to these bad boys right here? Well, give us a call over at SD Parts. You can meet us at sdparts.com or of course give us a ring and our tech guys will definitely help you pick out what you need for your build. We thank you for stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We hope that you give us a like and subscribe and a share to both your friends, family, and hot rodders like you and me so we can help everybody out with this information. And we will see you next Friday for another tech video.